In today's class, I'm going to walk you through how to choose the correct market data subscription for your live trading platform. Because in case you didn't know, market data subscriptions are not standardized. They can be very different across different platforms, which means what you may be using by default could give you a very different view of the market from other traders. Now that's going to be a problem because we're looking at this market data to get our signals of when to buy and when to sell. So if you are missing some of these signals, well, clearly that's going to cost you a lot of money. So let's jump onto the whiteboard and begin breaking down the different types of market data. We're going to begin with level one data, which includes the bid, the offer, the last price that went through, the last trade price, and the current volume today. So uh, level one data is used for creating stock charts traditionally, because as you can see here, the stock chart, what this is communicating right here is the last price that went through. That number, $1.08, is referring to the last price, the last order that went through. So each one of these candles, of course, is created as actual orders are going through the market. And when the stock is moving up during this candlestick period, of course, we have a green candle. When the price is moving down, we have a red candle. So to create these charts, you would need to be subscribed to level one data. That'll give you the bid, the offer, the last price, and the volume. And that is fine for stock charts. It's also fine for stock scanners because stock scanners are searching the market using level one data to see which stocks are making new highs the new high would be uh, based on the last price. The last price, and then of course you could use the volume and other things like that to uh, create calculations to look specifically for certain types of stocks. So when it comes to level one data, most platforms have it standardized where you subscribe to level one data based on uh, which exchange you want the data from. So this is all the level one data that you'd get. And then you can subscribe to receive level one data from, well, we'll say NSDQ as the abbreviation for NASDAQ, NYSE as the abbreviation for the New York Stock Exchange, and Amex for the abbreviation for the American Stock Exchange. Now, each of these exchanges typically will charge $1 for level one data which means your total cost for level one data is $3 per month from these three vendors, okay? So, and when you subscribe to market data through your trading platform, some brokers that make a ton of money include this market data for free. They just eat the cost on it. Other, bro and they have different thresholds when they have such a huge quantity of customers where they get breaks from the exchanges, but smaller brokers and smaller platform providers who don't get that break, they end up passing the $3 per user directly onto their customer. Or perhaps they you know, bake it into the platform fee, but in any case, this is gonna be included. Now, this is pretty much required, a required subscription to pull up charts for any stock listed on NASDAQ, NYSE, or Amex. Now, if you're interested in trading OTC stocks, stocks that trade on the over-the-counter exchange, then you would have to subscribe to level one quotes for OTC markets in order to pull up the stock charts, in order to see scanners, and in order to see just that first depth of the market. So what I want to talk about now is the difference between level one and level two. Level one provides the first depth of the market. So we have a stock that has a bid and an ask or the offer, depending on which term you prefer. So let's say it's $1 by a dollar and one cent. And this would be uh, the level one data. This is level one, the top of the market. It's the current best price of the buyer, the lowest price of the seller, or the best price seller in, in, this ex in this example. All right, so this is level one data. Now, most active traders are actually gonna want level two data. And what level two data shows us is not just the bid and the offer on the first level, but it also shows us all the people that are lined up a little bit lower in the case of the, the buyers. So this would show us all the buyers down here and we would see how many shares each one of them wants to buy. And it would be the same on the sell side. We would see all the sellers going up 102, 103, 104, you know, 105, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if we saw, for instance, on the level two depth of market, that there was a 1 million share seller right here at 102, 
then we would be able to perceive just looking at the level two data that there's a, going to be a lot of resistance at this current price. Without even looking at the chart, we would know that. Now, if let's just say this seller was listed, um, well, so first of all, if you only subscribe to level one data, you wouldn't even see this seller here. And therefore you would be trading at a disadvantage. You wouldn't see all the buyers and all the sellers that are on the book. By not seeing them, you wouldn't understand where potentially there are those big orders out there that could provide support on the buy side or resistance on the sell side. But even if you do subscribe to level two data, it's possible that this big sell order is on a, it could be on an unusual book or what's, we call it a book, um, an order book, but it could, it's also known as a route or an ECM, all right? So this would be the way the order is sent to the market. So when we're looking at level one data, we can see, oh, this order to sell at 101 is, um, is going through NSDQ, sorry, NSDQ, the NASDAQ exchange. So it'd be like, oh, that order's going through NASDAQ. Or we would see, oh, this order's on ARCA. So we would see which exchange that order's routed through. So naturally, if you're subscribing to uh, NASDAQ, NYSE, and the New York Stock Exchange, and Amex, you would have all of uh, the market data here. You would have market data for EdgeX. You would have market data for uh, ARCA. You have market data for New York Stock Exchange, of course, American Stock Exchange, and NASDAQ. However, there are some order books that you may not have access to. So if we look at actual um, market data here, what you'll see is in this case right now, we I have three different platforms on the screen. So you could see three different platforms and we can see the same price ARCA seller, oh sorry, ARCA buyer right here at a dollar and the order shows 67. That refers to 6,700 shares. You always add two zeros to whatever number you see. They just abbreviate it to make it easier to read. So this is a different um, trading platform and we see ARCA right there. And this is another trading platform, Thinkorswim, and we see ARCA right there. Okay, that makes sense. All of these platforms are all subscribing to ARCA. But what you might notice is over here, we don't have MEMX or MIAX. Currently, Thinkorswim is not providing me quotes from this book. So there are orders that are sitting on this book to buy at a dollar that are not visible on Thinkorswim because Thinkorswim does not subscribe or give the option to subscribe to these market um, to these books of market data. So you simply do not see it. Now, this isn't the case of, you know, what you don't see won't hurt you. It could actually be a problem because you could have a really big buyer here on this route and you can't even see it. So what you can see on Thinkorswim is ARCA, you can see NASDAQ, BATS, EDGEX, NYSE, EDGEA, and PHLX. Now I have PHLX uh, right here as well. You could see it right there. I have EDGEA, I have BAT Y, uh, which because BATS, BATS S and BATS Y are the same, uh, it would probably show up. It, it may, yeah, that's probably what the Y is right here. Um, but as you can see, we are missing um, MEMX. And now on this platform, you see TLSA. And TLSA is not appearing on either of these two platforms. Okay, so this is where we start to see a little bit of a divergence between the subtleties of market data. So what I subscribe to here is called NASDAQ Total View. So I'll write that down for you so you can see it. So I subscribe to NASDAQ Total View. And by subscribing to NASDAQ Total View and all order books, I will see all the individual uh, different market makers that could be sitting on a particular stock. So this is going to be the most robust level of market data. This is also the most expensive level of market data. In fact, this platform costs about $200 a month for all of this data. It is not insignificant, whereas Thinkorswim is free. As long as you have an account there, it's free. That's $2,400 a year that you're saving. Now, does it really matter if you're missing MEMX and MIAX or TLSA? 
Probably, to be honest, probably not. It probably doesn't make a difference. The thing for me is that I don't use those more obscure markets for executing orders. When I'm actually placing my trades, I'm going to use the, the routes that have the most volume. Because when you send your order to the market, when you send your order to the market, I'm going to draw a little picture to help you kind of better understand how this works. The market is an island right here. So if you send your order through NASDAQ, NSDQ right here, and you want to buy the stock, but the stock is, um, let's just say you want to buy on NASDAQ, and there's also someone that is um, selling on NASDAQ, a seller right here, then by routing through NASDAQ and buying from the seller on NASDAQ, your order gets matched immediately. And this is going to be the most common because NASDAQ has the most volume of the market makers that I use. It has more volume than ARCA, than EdgeX, than NICE. So NASDAQ has the highest likelihood of having a direct match for my order. Now, if I was routing through, let's just say I was routing through PHLX down here. If I'm routing through PHLX and the seller is on uh, NASDAQ, then my order has to actually get rerouted over to NASDAQ. This process of rerouting an order it takes time. It takes some latency. And here's something that you may not know, but the high frequency trading algorithms take advantage of that little bit of latency because they subscribe to a level of market data that us retail traders don't have access to. So they actually see every single order that people are placing coming into the market before those orders get rerouted. So they see, let's say, a perhaps you are swinging big and you put a 10,000 share order to buy through PHLX. It comes in, it gets rerouted to, to NASDAQ. They've already seen your order come through. And perhaps this high frequency trading algorithm was on the order book here to sell. They see your order come through. They're like, you know what? Um, we're going to pull our order out. We don't want to sell to this person. And all of a sudden they can move their order before you can buy their shares because they might think, oh, this person wants to buy. There's something happening here. There's a reason. So we're going to take our order away. And so this process of cutting in front of and sort of moving around retail traders is like is something that happens every single day. So to avoid that, rather than routing my orders and sending them through obscure routes, I'm going to choose to send through the most common routes available. Now, this is also the process of direct routing. If you are using Thinkorswim, you don't even have the option to choose. Well, I guess technically you could choose, but nobody really does. Everyone lets Thinkorswim uh, use what's called their smart route. So I'm not going to draw the whole thing. I could do it right here. So the smart route will route the order that is best for the broker. Because remember, you are the commodity. It's a free commission broker. You pay zero commissions. They get paid by sending your order through these wholesalers. And so that's the, that's the relationship that these brokers have. You're the commodity and um, they get paid every time you place an order. So for me, I'm not using uh, Thinkorswim for my order routing because I know that that's not going to work well for my strategy. I'm going to use um, a broker that allows me to direct route to the to the market. And if right now I wanted to sell 6,700 shares, it would make a lot more sense for me to sell them directly on the ARCA exchange to this buyer on ARCA than to send them through NASDAQ, where they then would have to get rerouted to ARCA. And during that time, this order could disappear. And then all of a sudden, I'm selling my shares down at 99 cents or 98 cents or 96 cents. The reason that these orders um, do this is because of the obligation that the exchange has created to give people fills at current market price. Because if you were filling, if you were sending your order through ARCA, and let's just say we've got ARCA here on the bid at a dollar, and ARCA will also probably be on the offer at you know a dollar one or something like that, because they're usually on both sides of the of the tape or of the market. You can see it's actually at a dollar two. ARCA's right here at a dollar two. So if you um, only if you send your order through ARCA and they have an order at a dollar, but then their next best order is at 96 cents, 
it would be unfair for you to press the sell button and get filled at 96 cents if there was a better buyer out there. You know, let's say Arca's down here at 96 cents. This one's Arca. Well, Arca actually, if they can't give you the fill at a dollar, you know, then they have to reroute you to NASDAQ. So then they reroute you to NASDAQ, who's at, you know, 99 cents. So let's just say in this case, you route to Arca, but Arca's not on the tape until on the book until 96 cents. They send your order to NASDAQ and you get filled there. Now, if you pulled up your level two window in your trading platform, for instance, and every single order here was EdgeX, you didn't see any bats, NASDAQ, you didn't see anything other than EdgeX. Everything here all the way down is EdgeX. Then most likely you are only subscribing to market data from that one order book. And that's obviously going to be a problem because you're going to have a very highly filtered view of the market. You're not going to see any of the orders on any of the other routes. So that's not going to work. Now, I have seen traders who have traded that way without realizing it. So all of their quotes were like NYSE or NASDAQ or something like that. They didn't see anything else. And they were like, I guess this is just the way market data looks. But that's not the way it's supposed to look. What you're seeing here is, is pretty much how it's supposed to look. Although I'll say in this moment um, right now, because this particular stock is trading under $1 a share, you see several tiers at 97 cents on this particular stock. If I went in here and I changed the configuration of this window, I could change to four decimal points and you would actually see that these are at different prices. This platform here groups all the orders together that are at 97 sense, even if some of them are at 97.1, 97.2, et cetera, et cetera. So there can be an issue with you are subscribed to the, to the correct and full depth of the market, but because of the display settings on your platform, you're also seeing it differently. And this is certainly true with a platform like Thinkorswim, which these two platforms also are very similar to E-Trade. Green is the first uh, tier of the market. This is the best offer. This is the best buyer. And red is the second best. And then yellow is the second best. Now there happen to be four orders all at 97 cents. So there's four orders that are yellow because that happens to be a third one out. Over on Ameritrade or Thinkorswim with Charles Schwab, they're showing this um, gradient. Now this to me is, is not a helpful way to visualize level two. I really like seeing each of the levels of the market, level one, you know, the second one, the third one, the fourth one. Another thing that I could point out is um, LD right here and LULD. This is displayed on uh, most traditionally on direct access uh, platforms. And what this shows is the limit down price and the limit up price. So this shows where a stock would halt on circuit breakers. You don't have uh, any of that displayed on Thinkorswim. They don't display it. They don't show it to you. So they are not subscribing to this. Um, I, this must be a, a market data subscription that these uh, folks have and just include, and it's not included here. So that could be a little bit of a problem if you're trading a very volatile stock that has the risk of being halted up or down. If you don't know where those halt levels are, you could inadvertently get stuck in a halt. And now the stock is halted for five minutes and then it could be 10 minutes and you're just waiting there unable to sell your shares. So again, subscribing to more market data will give you access to um, this, kind of, uh, this kind of information, which is really important to know. So here's something interesting. You can change the settings to see how much level two you're displaying on your trading platform. So right now we can see this stock has, uh, you know, there's there's a chunk of orders here, but they, they just sort of stop at $1.10, right? Do you see how they just sort of stop there at $1.10? Well, what, what do you mean? They, they don't go to $1.19? So if we go into level two configuration, we can scroll down here and we can go down to choose how many orders we want to see. So we could change this to 50, to 50, to 50, and we could change this to 500. And now look at this. Whoa. Now that's different. So now this is showing us a lot more data. Now, how much is how much can you consume? How much is too much? Well, you know, what what's enough? This is going to be different for different traders. 
for me as a pretty fast trader, it's not usually helpful for me to see or necessary that amount of data. And it slows down, it can slow down how quickly the level two can load because you're just loading more data constantly. It's constantly updating this much more data. So for me, I've left it at the settings that you can see um, below, which are uh, or were 100, 5, and 5. And that's the default setting when you use um, this platform. So, I mean, I honestly think that that's just fine. It's enough for me. I can easily see the halt levels, which is, which is definitely helpful. Um, sometimes, you know, there could be a stock where the problem is maybe there's a big order somewhere in here that's not being displayed because it's just outside the filter range and there have been times where i think other people probably see that order and maybe it's a dollar 11 and i'm like i don't see it so i sort of might think the stock is better than it is because i'm missing out the view of that one order but if i show all of this depth there's not a guarantee that i'll see everything because it, it could just cross the the line of too much data for a person to fully consume so you know you pull up different stocks and you know you'll start seeing all these orders going up and obviously a lot of them are are relatively small but it's also possible that someone has what's called an iceberg order so this could be an iceberg of a larger order where they're just showing three thousand shares but there's really another twenty seven thousand behind it so it's like a they're just showing 10% of their size. That can happen on, on level two market data. So you have to be a little bit careful when you're looking at the data. Um, I talk about this in more detail in my episode where I specifically get into how I use level two to read the market. So if you found this interesting, I'd encourage you to check out this episode, th that next episode on reading level two. The goal of this episode is just to help you better understand the different levels of market data that you could choose to subscribe to and to make sure you're aware that this is really what full data would look like. So if you have something that is much more scaled back than that or doesn't have all of these quotes, you could be missing um, a substantial view of the market. You're looking at a filtered view and that could be hurting you in your trading. So I hope you have found this uh, to be a super helpful episode. It is kind of um, pretty specific to something that's relevant to active traders. So do me a favor, hit the thumbs up if you found this helpful. I hope you subscribe to the channel and go ahead and check out the episode on how to read level two, which I'll post right here. Okay, I'll see you for the next upload real soon.